Father, be glorified. Father, be exalted this morning. Father, be honored for there is none like you. You are worthy, Jesus, to be exalted this morning. I am grateful, Father, that you have given me the opportunity to bring your word. Rabba Sheka, Rabba Sai, exalt your name. Rama Kotulobo Shanta, Rabba Kota. I magnify your name, everlasting Redeemer. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be honored, Jesus. Father, receive all the glory. Father, receive all, all the honor. Father, receive all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus, for there is none like you. Jesus, I pray that my Father, as I bring your word to your people, my Father, that you are going to glorify yourself in your word. May you follow your word and fulfill it, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I worship you and I honor your name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome all of you to this service, wherever you are watching us from. And I know that this word is going to bless your life. Uh, every time you tune in for the word of God, I want you to know that there is a blessing that is waiting unto you. You can never tune in for a word of God and then you fail to be blessed. Every time you tune in, God blesses your life because the word of God brings hope unto our lives and God follows the, his word to fulfill it. So this morning I want you to know that God is listening and God is, is going to follow his word and fulfill it this morning. Whatever I'm going to speak to you, whatever I'm going to share to you, I want you to open your heart and receive the word of God as it is. And I want you to know that God will follow his word and fulfill it upon your life. I want to read in the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter, I want to read chapter 1. I want to read chapter 1, verse 6, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my heart, uh, uh, as much as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And this I pray that your love may abound till, still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. I want to go backwards, I don't know whether backwards or forward, but in the book of Habakkuk chapter 1 also, Habakkuk chapter 1, I want to read from verse 5, Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. Look among the nations and watch, be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe though it were told of you. Today I want to encourage ourselves this morning. I want to encourage you this morning through the word of God. The book of Habakkuk is talking about God doing a work in our lives and he says, look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe though it were told of you. And I want you to know that this is the word that God wants you to hear this morning. And God says, I know that I'm talking to somebody who maybe you woke up this morning and things did not go the way you expected them to go. You woke up this morning and maybe you are counting losses over the years since the year 2020. But there is something that God is talking to you this morning. And it is always important for you to open your ears and listen to what God is saying. When things become tough and when situations and conditions become tough, then you need to open your ears and hear what God is speaking. And God is saying, even though you lost your business, even though you lost your family, God is saying, look among the nations and watch. So you need to look among the nations. You need to look among your surroundings. You need to look among the people that you are with. And God says, after watching, be utterly astounded. Be utterly astounded. In other words, 
I think that word means tends to think that you need not to be moved. You need not to be moved. For I will work a work in your days which you will not believe. I will do a work in your days that you will not believe. God is speaking to us at this time that is going to do a work in our days. God is going to do a work in your days. I know some regret and say, I know that for sure we are living in bad days. When we look around, we are living in bad days. Everything can tell that we are living in bad days. We are getting bad reports every day. Bad reports when we look in the media, bad reports. When we listen to our government, bad re reports. When we listen to our neighbors, bad reports. But God is saying something. God is speaking something to your spirit today. You who is discouraged, I am. you are the one that I'm talking to. You who is discouraged to a level of, you even don't know where to begin and where to end. This word is for you this morning. God is saying, look among the nations and watch. So God wants you to watch. God wants you to stay with the expectations. And he says, and be astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you will not believe. So God is saying that he will work a work in your days. At this time when things are tough, at this time when everybody is discouraged, at this time when uh, there are a lot of burdens on people's shoulders, God is saying, I am going to work in your, a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told of you. So God is saying that he will do that work. And when God says something, I want you to know God's promises are yes and amen. Our God is not a liar. Our God is a faithful God. He says, I will do a work among in your days, which you would not believe, though it were told of you. And I believe this is the time when God is speaking this word. And this word, we are living at a times when we don't see anything good around us, when we don't expect anything good. And some of us are longing even to die because we thought uh, 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 it was just 2020 only, but now even 2021, the same problems are following us, even in 2021. And some of us feel that it were better if we were dead. But I want you to know that is not the will of God. It would not be better if you were dead. God wants you alive. And God is speaking to you this morning. And that is why it is very much important for you to listen to me. That is why it is very much important for you to hear this word this morning. God says that I am going to do, to work a work in your days. And this is a, these are your days. When you are alive, that, is, that, is, that means God will not do it when you are dead. God will do it when you are alive. I am going to do, uh, to work a work in your days which you would not believe just the same way because i know that i am talking and some of you cannot believe but i want you to know that god is speaking to your spirit this morning and i want you to live with the expectation after now knowing very well that god is going to work a work in our days god is going to work a work in our days because we are the ones that are alive now and god is going to work in a work a work in our days and god knows very well and god knew the very well that even as i speak to you this morning you will not believe and that is why he's saying i am going to do a work in your uh, in your days which you would not even believe if it were told of you there before you would not believe and maybe even now you are not believing but i know that god is going to do it soon than you think when you are still alive when you are still here, God will, will make do that work in our days. And therefore, you are supposed to stay with the expectation. The Bible says, though it were you would not believe, though it were told of you. So God is saying that if I told you that this would happen, and then I show you what I would work after that, what I will, what I will do after that, you would not believe. But God, God knew that you would not believe. But he's saying, stay with the expectation. So as I bring this word to your life this morning. I want you to stay with the expectation, knowing very well that God is going to work a work in your days. God is going to do a work, uh, to work a work when you are still alive. And you better believe. God knew that you would not believe, but God wants you to believe because 
if you don't believe then you you cannot be part of it and you may not you may be bypassed so the most important thing for you to do is to believe what i'm saying this morning god is going to work a work so that is something that you should not forget it doesn't matter how discarded you are it doesn't matter what you are doing that you may be in wilderness but god is going to work a work in our days that work you are the one as a child of god you are the one to manifest that work you are the one because the bible says that god is able to do exceedingly abundantly through the power that he has in, put in our lives so god works through the power that he has put in us so that work that is going to be worked by god it is going to be worked through your life and and god says that you better believe it because that is what is exactly God is what God is going to do. God is going to use you in a mighty way. God is going to use you in a mighty manner. So you better believe what God is saying. Because when God begins to work, he works through the power that is in our lives. That is what the Bible says. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than how you can think. And that work which God does, he does it through the power that he has put in our lives. So when God says that I am going to work a work in your days, it means that he will do that work using your power. And that is why that work must be done when you are still alive. Because God cannot use you when you are dead. God can only use you when you are alive so that you can, you can manifest these great works. And I've been saying time and again that it is our time for manifestation. When this work, great work is done through our lives, then that is how we manifest that is how we manifest as the children of god that is how we bring light to our generation because there is a lot of darkness in our generation there is no hope in our generation there is total darkness in our generation and as the children of god we are the ones that are supposed to take out that darkness from our uh, our generation by manifesting by doing the great work that god is talking about so I want you to know it doesn't matter how weak you feel, but God is about to strengthen you. It doesn't matter how hopeless you are, God is about to give you hope. It doesn't matter how tired you are, God is going to take away all your burdens from off your shoulders and you are going to be free because he's our God. He's speaking to your spirit this morning to encourage you. He's speaking to your spirit this morning to encourage you. He's speaking to your uh, spirit this morning just so that you can arise again as a child of God and begin to show the glory of God in your life so God is going to do a work in your life you may not believe but as a child of God we believe we believe everything that God says and therefore you have got no option but to believe this word this morning and and as, as you go to do whatever you do as you go to your business as you go to your that office I want you to stay there expecting that great work which God is saying he will work it doesn't matter, maybe they have demoted you, maybe they want to terminate your work, but you should not be worried. God is going to work a work in your days, which you, you would not even think that is how we would do. And we see Paul also speaking to, to the church uh, of Philippi, speaking to the brethren, showing them how much he does, uh, he does uh, pray for them. And one thing that Paul assures the church is that, the, the, he is confident, uh, he has confidence that uh, everything that God began in their lives, uh, God would still accomplish it. Hallelujah. So Paul assures the church that God who began good work in their lives would, would accomplish that work. So he says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Christ. And that is what you need to know, my brother, my sister. God began a good work in your life. And you need to walk with confidence. Even when things are tough, even when you are walking through your wilderness. Remember, we walk through wilderness. We don't build houses in wilderness. We just go through. And you are also going through. You are not going to die. You are going through to uh, go and take a place of your inheritance. So we just go through. No matter how painful it is, as I speak, I know that some of you are going through a lot of pain. Maybe you are sick and it is really painful. You are hurting. Uh, 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 you have lost maybe a family member. No, You know there are many things that can make somebody to be hurt. Maybe you are that kind of a person who has been hurt. But Paul is encouraging us this morning. This is what we need to know. So Paul says, I pray for you every day. Paul prays for them every day. Because even he himself went through a lot. 
he went through uh, he was he was bound with chains he was jailed he was taunt and he was done every kind of a thing and maybe you are a victim where you are but paul says this morning be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of jesus christ so god is still working in your life god is not through with your life he is still working in your life and that work which god began it will complete when Jesus comes. So God is working on you every day. When you are defeated, when you are, when you are, when you feel tired, when you feel weary, I want you to know that God is still working in you. And therefore, even this morning, it doesn't matter how you woke up. I want you to know that God is still working in your life. It is that work is still in continuation, and that will work will be completed when Christ, when Jesus Christ comes. So until that day, when Jesus Christ comes. That is when that work will be completed. So God is still working uh, uh, in our lives every day. And you need to have confidence as a child of God that God is still working in you. God is not through with you as you go. And when God is not through with you, it means that he's still molding you. He's still working on you. He's still preparing you. And therefore, every time you go through a tough time, you need to have confidence and call upon the name of the Lord. And when you call upon the name of the Lord, he will answer you because he is very much concerned about uh, uh, your life. You are the work of his hands. And therefore, he's still working in you. He's still molding you. The Bible tells us that uh, Jesus is, is the one that molds us. Uh, he's the one that molds us. We are just clay. And he's the one who is molding us. So if you are just clay, you need to rest and wait to be molded by God. So have confidence, my brethren. Have confidence. This is the word that I want to tell you. The same words that Paul told the brethren. The same words I'm telling you. Be confident. Don't lose your confidence. Your confidence is very important. Your confidence in Jesus is very important. Your confidence in salvation is very important. Don't lose that confidence. It doesn't matter what people are saying. It doesn't matter what is happening to others. That which has happened to others, uh, that evil will not happen to you. Because God is still working in you. And God is going to protect you. God is going to protect you. Some of us are wondering, how shall it be tomorrow? How about my family and my children? I want you to know that God began a good work in you and he will, he will he will he will continue to do that work until the day of jesus christ and verse 7 he says just it is it is right for me to think this of you all because i have you in my heart in as much as both in my chains and in the defense of and confirmation of the gospel you are all partakers with me of grace so i want you to know that the grace is sufficient that is very important when you know about the grace then you are supposed to have confidence have confidence because of the grace so i want you to know that there is the grace of god god will release and has already released grace over your life to overcome so that that problem is not going to kill you that sickness is not going to kill you joblessness is not going to do anything to you so don't hurt yourself don't terminate your life God is still working in your life. God is not through with your life. And therefore you need to allow him to continue working in your life. And Paul says that the grace is sufficient. We are all partakers of grace. Wherever you are watching me from, I want you to know you are a partaker of grace. You are a partaker of the grace of God. And, and that grace will enable you to go through whatever things that you are going through. So Paul says that everyone is a partaker of of that grace because even he himself he says that if it were not of grace he would not make it because he says in as much as both in my chains and in my in the defense and confirmation of the gospel you are all partakers with me of grace so paul even himself was taken by grace his time was not easy here he had a very tough time because he had to defend the gospel he had to defend the word that he spoke because many people rose against him, many people beat him, many people conspired against him. But Paul says that he had to stand for the defense and confirmation of the gospel. He says that God had to release grace over his life because sometimes he was in chain, sometimes he was locked up, 
sometimes he was taunt, sometimes he went all through all these pains. And you realize that he would not go through those pains if it were not of the grace of God. And he says that every child of God has grace. So wherever you are, whether in Kenya, whether in the diaspora, I want you to know that the grace of God has been released over your life. As a child of God, you are a partaker of grace. Grace enables you to, uh, to overcome tough things that a normal person cannot over, 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 overcome. Grace enables you to keep on moving on even when the situations and the conditions are working contrary to where you are going. Even when the storms are going in the opposite direction, even when the wind is going in the opposite direction, you fight because you have the grace of God in your life. So God is going to work a work in your days that you would not believe even if you were told god is going to do that work i want you to have that confidence that god is going to have uh, to do that work he's going to do it he's going to do it he can never lie he has never lied and he will never lie everything that god has ever spoken he has fulfilled it and therefore even this word for this morning is going to fulfill it to your life just get to know that the grace is sufficient if you are somewhere discouraged you need to wake up now you need to shower up you need to arise you're a child of god and you need to begin to praise god because god, god is going to do a work uh, in our days god is going to work a work that work is going to be done through you so wake up and allow god to use you as a vessel because he's going to use you and when he uses you, he's going to manifest himself. He's going to take you, strengthen you, and just give you all the qualities of overcoming in the mighty name of Jesus. So I believe this word this morning has encouraged you. I don't want to speak much because I know that you are going to work. You are going to do whatever you do. And I know that God will bless your life. I just want to pray for you so that you may receive that grace, which is, uh, which is uh, your inheritance or which is your right as a child of God. Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your people that have listened to your word this morning. I honor you, Father, for enabling them to tune in, my Father. Thank you, Jesus, because this word was for somebody. Lord, I thank you because this word was for somebody that is discouraged, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for them, O oh God, that Lord, everybody that is watching me, you are going to give them confidence, my Father God. Lord, I pray that you are going to finish that work which you began in their lives everlasting redeemer in the mighty name of jesus may you continue to work in them O oh god father let the, let them have confidence those that have lost confidence i pray for them that they are going to have confidence in you king of glory that you're going to do a work in their lives in their days my father god in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray for the grace of god to be upon them in the mighty name of jesus may you release the grace to overcome may you release the grace my father god in the mighty name of jesus christ grace to do great things my father even when there is great opposition the grace of god over your people's lives my father is going to make them conquerors is going to enable them to conquer in the mighty name of jesus christ i exalt you father and i bless your name be exalted be magnified for there is none like you father i pray for those that are sick may you heal them my father those that are going through pains i pray that you're going to touch them this morning in the mighty name of jesus christ father i pray for those that are discouraged encourage them this morning in the mighty name of jesus christ father those that cannot see light pray for them that you're going to enable them to see light and let your name be exalted i give you praise and i give you honor thank you in jesus name we pray amen may god bless you i believe that god has already done it for you i, I know that now you feel better if you were sick wake up because god has already healed you if you were discouraged just wake up and begin to see what god wants you to do because is going to work a work in you and you are that vessel that god is going to use you are not born again you need to give jesus your life you cannot make it without him so just give him your life i want you to pray this prayer after me say lord jesus i give you my life this morning that you may save me forgive me of my sins today from now come into my life and make my life your dwelling place control me and guide me in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer. You are now born again. Jesus is Lord over your life. You are going to overcome every battle. I want you to look for a spiritual church uh, uh, near you. A local church where the word of God is taught. 
join that church. If you are in Mombasa, JCC Tudor is the place to be. Uh, when you come to JCC Tudor, that is a place where we worship God in truth and in the spirit. So join JCC Tudor family and God is going to glorify uh, himself in your life. Amen. Uh, you are watching me also and you would want to give your offering. I want to give you that opportunity. Uh, use our pay bill number which is 58, uh, which is uh, the pay bill number which is for 247, 247 and the account number is 584299. When you use those details, you are going, we are going to receive your offering and God is going to bless your life. So I want to pray for that offering, that tithe, that, that uh, vow, that pledge in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I honor you for your people. Lord, as they give willingly, I commit them before your presence. Bless their lives, my Father. Glorify yourself in their lives and let your name be exalted. I give you praise and honor in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you for listening to the word of God. May God bless you. Do have a good day.